Buckle up, guys, because today I'm about to blow your mind. Yes, that's right, because we are looking at some of the most interesting maps in the world. You're going to learn, you're going to feel, you're going to laugh, you're going to cry. All these emotions are about to happen within the next 30 minutes. So let's do this. More than half the world's population lives inside this circle. And the circle shows China, India, and all of Southeast Asia. Yeah, so I think India is now the most populous country in the world. They have like 1.45 billion people. China has 1.4. So together they're like close to three and there's 8 billion people, which means about 1 billion people live across Indonesia, Japan, South Korea, Mongolia, etc. Yeah, it does put things into perspective. I mean, the East is king. If you're in this circle and you're watching this video, leave me a... I am in the circle comment so then I can know how many of you guys are watching this from the circle. That'd be cool. All right, this next map is the British have invaded almost every country on Earth. Yeah, I think there's only a couple of countries that they haven't. I think it's like less than 10. I remember seeing them. So let's see. So the people who are safe are Sweden, Bolivia, Guatemala, Paraguay, Marshall Islands. Oh my gosh, there's very few. So when did the Brits take like Russia? I don't know my history, I guess, that well. I didn't know that they ever seized them. The Brits are crazy. Look at you guys just conquering the world. So you conquered like 171 of these territories or countries. Jeez. It's actually interesting. Guatemala kind of like stayed out of it. You guys are just chilling. Same, I guess, with some of the South American countries. Because like you think once you go west, you just like conquer everything. But you guys somehow, I guess like the Spaniards or somebody, like they probably like had a hold on these or the French. And they didn't just want to go into conflict with them. But this is very interesting, and I guess Vatican City, too, so you guys recognize the Pope as holy. If you're a Brit, shout out to you guys. I like the Brits. I think the Brits, it's important. Imperialism was a very important part of our history. I mean, it's it's an unfortunate truth. Actually, no, it's a fortunate truth. Without imperialism and without the Brits taking over, there wouldn't have been all these revolutions that have given rise to the cultures that we now have today. So I think the Brits, we actually owe them an apology. We're sorry for you know, being nasty to you because you guys are great people. All right, next up, Africa is much bigger than you think. So within the continent of Africa, you can comfortably fit in the United States, India, Mexico, China, and Western Europe, as well as Japan, which is about the size of Madagascar. Yeah, there's that website, um, the true size of, and you used to play around with it. And like, you could fit Antarctica, you could fit in like Greenland, all these different, because since Africa, according to the Mercator projection, is right in the middle of the equator, it actually is as big as it looks. Whereas like Russia, for instance, you could like probably fit it comfortably within Africa as well, I'd guess. That's pretty cool. All right, we're looking at the wealthiest American in every state. So who's the wealthiest in New Jersey? David Tapper. No idea who that is. Oh, look at this poor guy, Robert Gore. Robert Gore in Maryland's not even worth a billion dollars. Who's the poorest person in America, according to their... Oh, this guy, Robert Gillum in Alaska. 700 million. That's so cringe. Imagine doing that. Who is Dennis Washington living out in Montana making 5.8 billion? What does he own? Yellowstone National Park? I'm guessing a lot of these people are also like sports teams owners. So like the random people like in these random countries like... Uh, I don't know, Utah, for instance. Like, he probably owns the Jazz or something, I'd guess. Who knows? All right, so the best places on Earth to be born are right here. And according to this, Switzerland is the best place to be born. And there's some other good spots, like Canada. I do not think that Canada is a better country to live in than the United States, but I guess that's up for debate. Um, but nonetheless, so let's see the worst countries to be born in. Somehow... We aren't accounting for Africa or North Korea, but I'm assuming North Korea would be the worst that they had data on this. I don't know why there's like a lack of data in Africa so much, but some of the worst ones, I mean, there you have it. Kazakhstan, and then you have Russia, Ukraine. Yeah, I guess like all these like war-torn nations. Morocco as well. I was just there though. I like Morocco. It was pretty chill there. Liberia, Myanmar, and the United States are the only countries that don't use the metric system. Shout out to you guys. Pounds and like yards and feet. We love that. America is so big that its states are the size of countries. See, everybody always talks down to Americans like, oh, you guys don't know anything about the rest of the world. Like, especially Europeans, they're like, oh, I've been to 25 countries and, like, I'm only 10 years old. Well, it's like, yeah, because your countries are literally the size of, like, half of Texas. Like, literally look at this. 
look at this map and tell me like if i've been to california that's more impressive than if it, like a brit has been to like russia i'm sorry it's just the case not only are we much bigger and each individual state has its own identity but there's 50 of them the eu doesn't even have 50 members so going to a state is essentially like going to a country. So if you're in the US and someone's like, oh, how many countries have you been to? You should start counting states as countries. I'm gonna start doing that. I think that's a very effective move. Much of America is uninhabited. So everybody, I don't know. Okay, so the dark green represents where there's zero people. No, that can't be true. So there's nobody lives here. I mean, I knew that, like nobody lives in Idaho, nobody lives in most of Nevada, nobody lives in like East Oregon, and I guess a lot of people are starting to flock to uh, the Montana, Wyoming region, maybe just because Kanye lives there, and Post Malone, I think. But it does put things into perspective. Even here, it's kind of interesting to see like Northeast, like that main area, nobody lives there. And then of course, where's like it absolutely white? I guess like in this, where, of course where I am, New Jersey, you can't, you can't like walk out of your house and not see somebody. It's just the densest city. Uh, sorry, it's the densest state in the United States by a long shot. The map of world wealth. Yeah, so wealth is always concentrated north. I don't know why that is exactly. I don't know why south of the equator over time has not been like as booming of a economy, economic world power, but everything north of the equator generally like rules. I guess it's because we have so much more land mass up there, so I guess it makes sense. Here's a friendly stat. Fewer people are dying from war than ever before. I mean, that's great to see, right? So <laughs> in the 1940s, of course, they're starting this during World War II. All this was happening, obviously terrible. And then it's like, you know, a couple of sprucing up during like Vietnam and like all these other random wars. And then nobody's really dying. Oh, there's a little blip at the end there. I, I'm guessing, depending on when this article was, this is probably the war of Russia and Ukraine. Uh, and then early here is going to be like the invasion of Afghanistan, all the Middle East stuff happening. But in general, it's a pretty good time to be alive. It's actually the greatest time ever to be alive. Everybody has like an iPhone in their pocket. Everybody has like a good standard of living at this point. The poverty line, I think, has increased by like 20x over the past like 10 years alone, like something crazy like that. And yeah, a lot of people have access to water now. We have modern medicine. So this is an absolutely, congratulations. You've won the lottery. Think about all the humans that have existed. I don't know how many, let's say 50, million, 50 billion people. You have won the lottery. And if you live in the United States or you live in one of these Western countries or one of the like East Asian countries or one of the developed countries, Middle East, etc., you've also won the lottery. Okay, so here are drugs deadlier than marijuana. Uh, tobacco, alcohol, prescription painkillers, that's probably gone up a lot too. This was 2011. I know like uh, prescription drugs are now like the leading cause of people dying, at least in the Northeast. Yeah, I mean, I'm not, I, I don't care too much for drugs. I think drugs in general are like absolute L, whether it's like alcohol or smoking cigarettes or smoking weed. I think like for the most part, like any sort of paraphernalia, that is considered to be um, mind enhancing is generally like an L. I'm just not really like too into it. I feel like if you haven't mastered your sober life, then why are you dabbling in these other things trying to like extract some sort of positive takeaway from it? But it is it is eye opening to see that nobody dies from it. But I'll tell you how many people are like absolute deadbeats because they smoke like every single day. That's that's what you're unable to show here in the in the data so all right so this map shows the average mental health by country so it looks like the countries with the best mental health will be venezuela and then spain with mental health quotients of 85 venezuela and 91 the united states and canada i mean pretty mid-tier at 63 which i guess is fine you want to get that as high as possible though health should be non-negotiable for everybody not only your physical health but your mental health too a strong mind is the key to being the best version of yourself that's why it's important to regularly speak with people like your family or your friends or a licensed therapist which is good because this video is sponsored by BetterHelp. So whether you have a clinical mental health issue like depression or anxiety, or you're just stressed out and going through a bad time, therapy can give you the tools to take control of your mind and approach life in a different way. BetterHelp's mission is to make therapy more affordable and more accessible because finding a therapist can be hard, especially if you're in an area with limited options. BetterHelp's platform makes finding a therapist easier because it's online, remote, and just by filling out a few questions, BetterHelp can match you to a professional therapist in as little 
as a few days. It's really incredibly easy to sign up, so use the link in my description or the pinned comment below, or alternatively, go to betterhelp.com sambucha to get 10% off your first month of BetterHelp to connect you with a therapist. So in short, if you're struggling, consider using BetterHelp to connect you with a therapist. Again, go to the link in the description, the pinned comment, or betterhelp.com sambucha. Thank you again to BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. Anyways, the Philippines, Salama, is the world's most emotional country. Singapore is its least. So Sing it's crazy because they're like right next to each other. So Singapore doesn't bat an eye. No emotions. I guess that's why you guys are so successful. I think you have the highest GDP per capita. But then the Philippines, you guys are... You know what? I knew this because Philippines are like really, I guess, emotional. They're like really good singers. They're like really good at expressing... Um, I love the Philippines. My girlfriend's Filipino. I have a lot of Filipino friends. I think they're probably the coolest country in Asia. I'm sorry, I'll just say it straight out. The only 36% of Singaporeans experience positive or negative emotions in a given day. So you guys are just stoic. Whereas the Philippines, 60% of people. And America is the 15th most emotional. Would you look at that? Germany and Japan have the world's oldest populations. Niger has the youngest. Okay, so Germany and Japan, I think that's 46.1. Wow, and then Germany is also up there, in like the 46, 47 range. And then you have Niger at 15.1. Wow, what a disparity. You know, they say that Nigeria, Niger, Kenya, Uganda, these are all the countries that are like growing disproportionately as opposed to like Japan, the United States. We have declining birth rates and then all these other countries are just like propping up in Africa. So Africa is actually, I think over time, once things kind of like stabilize politically and once the kind of the economy gets going, is going to be an absolute beast. Snapchat is more popular than Twitter among millennials. Well, the thing is like millennials are kind of old. Like when you think of a millennial, you think of an old head. Like I'm almost a millennial. I think I'm, I'm barely Gen X. Sorry, I'm barely Gen Z which I'm assuming a lot of people watching this are either Gen Z or Millennial. That's probably like 50%, 60% of you guys. I don't know. Let me know what generation you are if you're not one of those two. Is anybody like Generation Alpha? Like if you're under the age, I think of like 12, let me know. Say like I'm Gen Alpha, so then I could like get a read on all of your data. But yeah, it doesn't surprise me. I remember like Millennials, I don't do this, but they used to like get somebody's snap instead of their number. So they would just like effectively text them through Snapchat, which I thought was weird. But I guess the data backs it up. And then Facebook, I mean, it's funny that Facebook has like the most users, even though nobody actually uses it. Like a lot of people have profiles, but they don't actually use it. All right, so half of the US GDP comes from these 23 orange blotches. I mean, this isn't gonna be surprising. So it's gonna be, yeah, it's gonna be all the major cities. So you have like New York, LA, San Diego, San Francisco, Miami, and then you have Austin, you have Dallas, you have Seattle. I don't know what this is. If I had to take a guess, maybe it's Denver. Then you have Chicago, and then you have Detroit. This makes sense. I don't think this is like the most surprising thing. Boston, of course. We just saw the map before that shows how much of the US is uninhabited, so I think this lines up completely. Antarctica's weird time zone. So Antarctica has how many time zones is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11 time zones. I think... China also has like 18 or something crazy. They have like a lot. So, got it to time zones. Guyana has the highest suicide rate in the world. So, Guyana has a suicide rate above 15? Oh, 15 per 100,000 people. Gotcha. So, that's like every... That's a 0.15% chance that any given person will do that. That's terrible. So, who has the lowest... So that's even worse than North Korea, which is pretty bad. And then the US is 12.1. So we like to see that, not the 12.1, but we like to see kind of, you know, going low comparatively. But the best countries, looks like Mexico is really good with that. The Middle East, Indonesia. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so if the world were as tightly packed as New York City, so if we had New York City's density, everyone could fit into Texas. So basically, Texas is big enough I, there's no way that's true. So if we all live like New Yorkers, everybody, all 8 billion people could fit within Texas. So Texas would just be a giant New York City. Europeans, that's how big one of our 50 states is. Like, everybody in the world could basically comfortably fit into Texas. 
Because New York, I mean, it's garbage. Like, if you live in New York City, then I'm sorry for you. Like, subways are gross. You risk your life every time you go outside. There's no Wi-Fi on the subways. There's construction and scaffolding that can fall on your head at any given point. You pay 6% local tax for them to do absolutely nothing. It's a failed state, terrible politicians. However, it is pretty cool that you could kind of live like that because you're really not like too cramped and you could be in Texas, everybody. So I could say hello to a North Korean and he'd be my neighbor in Dallas. I like that. Uh, assault deaths in America are falling. So what we see is uh, people are not being assaulted as much. I like that. Um, I don't know why. It's kind of interesting to see the drop off. I think it has something to do with our connectivity via the internet. You'd have to think that the internet and just like general progress technologically, people having more higher paying jobs, so they're less likely to do crimes because they have more to lose. I don't know what it is exactly, but it is good to see. I mean, you wanna see this, right? We've cut childhood mortality almost in half since 1990. See, this is what I'm saying. Best time to be alive from 1990 to 2012, it looks like 90 to 48. So that, that's a, a pretty good, a pretty good drop off. So 45 extra babies are now born. Uh, out of every thousand, and those babies could end up being somebody incredibly important, like you guys. Aww. Subscribe. Global population will explode to 11 billion people by 2100. So we have 8 billion, probably over 8 billion now, maybe like 8.2, 8.3 billion. So you're telling me within the next, I, I could believe that, the next 75 years, we're going to gain another 3 billion people. That'd be pretty unprecedented, but based on Africa growth, based on India. I think India is gonna have like 3 billion people within the next 50 years, which is wild. So if you're in India, then you're an absolute monster. So shout out to you guys in a good way. Uh, you are a tiny speck of nothingness. All right, well, we went from maps to now me feeling like very bad about myself and having an existential crisis because Milky Way is there and we are probably, you could zoom this in infinitely. Like just zoom in this picture all the way. You're still unable to see earth, let alone us. But I think that's kind of fun. It's fun to know that we're playing in like a no man's sky map that's like infinite. What's that game that just dropped? Uh, Starfield? Kind of like that, which is cool. All right, so now we're looking at a political map of the world circa 200 AD. So Jesus is 150 years gone, and this is what the lay of the land looks like. So nobody has ever traversed, I guess, to Siberia, to Russia, to Africa, even though every human originated from Ethiopia. Um, but it is interesting to see how so many of these countries have no political... It, it's like, look at this. I think the craziest part is, is the Western Hemisphere, how Mexico and, yeah, I guess like that whole little area, the Aztec Empire, that's the only thing in the West that had any sort of politics attached to it. And otherwise, you have the Ottoman Empire, the Persian Empire, Chinese Empire here. Then, of course, you have your... Mesopotamia, Mediterranean type vibes with Rome and Greece and Spain and all that. But that's it. Imagine that was the world today with no US influence. I feel like a lot of the people would like that. Not me, because I like the US, but very cool. Okay, where people are the most and least welcoming to foreigners. All right, I don't know if the US should be purple. I feel like we're pretty accepting. People love doing tourism in the US. You know what I found? People who have told me about their experiences when visiting America, they're like, oh, people are actually so much nicer than I thought. They say people are nicer than they thought. You get a lot of food, which they didn't expect. And then they said that there's a lot of different cultures here, which is true. We're a true melting pot. The U.S. has no in identity. Like nobody is born American. You have like some like ethnic thing that goes back. That's why everyone's like, oh, where are you from? No, where are you really from? Because you can't be from America. Like it goes back to just one of these main areas, pretty much. So the least welcoming is China. I don't know if that's true. So I, I've been to Hong Kong before, which I obviously are two separate nations. Um, but at least there, they were very welcoming. I love my time there. Same thing with um, Korea. I heard a lot of people in Korea like love kind of interacting with Americans, like so long as the Americans are fun. This is interesting to see, same with Russia. Uh, I feel like they're just like highlighting a bunch of like the superpowers. Saudi Arabia, so I was just in Dubai and I saw a lot of ads for Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. Everyone's saying that you should go there, that it's like actually like super fun to kind of like head to. I guess it's not welcoming for certain groups, which is fair, but I mean, I feel like I could travel pretty freely. The US passport is so broken. All right, the world's major writing systems. Latin alphabet just taking over Latin America and South America, which makes sense. And then other than that, you have Cyrillic here. 
pretty basic otherwise. Like, Latin's just king. It's just king. So here's the world map of major religions by country. So, wow, Christianity dominates the West, the Americas, Europe, uh, and then Muslims, obviously, in North Africa and in the Middle East and into some of the Western Asian countries. Hindus in India, unaffiliated China, just not about that life. And then you have Australia back to Christianity. So I think that Islam is, if not now, or is going to be the majority religion in the world. I think it's almost there. Don't quote me on that. I think they actually might be there. I think there's more Muslims than Christians in the world, but it's close. It's like the China versus India population race. It's all just like everyone's right there. But I think eventually uh, Islam is going to reign supreme as like the world's most subscribed to religion. And I think that's just a function of them reproducing a lot more than the West, which is declining. All right, so this map shows where people are the most and least racially tolerant. Okay, so it looks like people in the US, as expected, are extremely tolerant. Everybody in the US is chill. Same in Australia. I know people like to tout like, oh, America's racist. It's obviously not racist. Is there racism? Yes. Is it a racist country? No. And then you have India, who I guess loud and proudly, over 40% of people say that they would not want somebody from another race to be their neighbor. You know, I mean, it's, it's that's their culture. It is what it is. I, I know India, I used to do like videos on like the most and least racist countries and Indy would show up. Japan would show up, but not for the reason, not, not because they're racist, but because they're more like nationalistic and they prefer to kind of like stick together which is just that group mentality. I mean, that's just like goes back to our tribe days. So interesting to see. Then you have like some of these middle ground countries like China and Russia. But yeah, the West seems to be generally more racially tolerant than the East. Okay. All right, so the most ethnically diverse countries. Now this is, I always find this interesting that the US doesn't do better here because that's like their big thing. Like, oh, we have a bunch of different people. We're literally a melting pot, but I guess they're right in the middle because I think they're grouping white as one like ethnicity group rather than multiple. And you have the most ethnic, which to me looks like, I don't even know, which one looks, is this more green? What is that? Like, uh, a guinea? Can't really tell from here, but okay, pretty cool. All right, so now where people feel the most and least loved. All right, so people feel the most love in, um, Paraguay looks like people are 86% of people are like very loved, which I love. And the Philippines. This is all very good to see. Oh, you guys, if you're watching this video, this means you feel love. I love you. I hope you love me too. And the people who are actually really, they need like a hug. Let's see here. The people who need a hug looks like some of the stands. So maybe that's Turkmenistan and then uh, Tajikistan, maybe. I can't really tell from here. Um, and then you have Mongolia. So you guys definitely need some hugs. Same with Morocco. And yeah. Belarus. I think that it probably has a lot to do with the culture and people not communicating their feelings as much. But everybody should have um, some sort of love in their life. Oh, yeah. Who loves and hate America? All right, let's see. So if you're watching this video, let me know if you hate me or if you love me. Um, so people who don't like us. Egypt. Egypt, Turkey, and Pakistan. Are you kidding me? I love you guys. I was just in Egypt. I was literally in Cairo. And I felt like... I felt pretty loved. I felt like people generally liked me. So let you're telling me less than half of the people. I would go through like the... I would go through security in Egypt and people would just see my passport. They're like, oh, Habibi, like come through. I'm like, okay, great. This is news to me. If I saw this, I'd be, I wouldn't be going to Egypt. This is such, I think this is misleading. When I was in Egypt, I was getting so many DMs like, oh, like Sam, do a meet and greet. Egyptians love you. I, I love Egyptians. So this is a shock. Um, as for Turkey, I mean, I don't, I like Turkey too. I mean, I want to go to Turkey. I want to go to like that power, uh, hot air balloon festival thing. I thought that'd be cool. And then Pakistan, that's a joke. I love you guys as well. So I don't know why you guys hate me. I don't know what I did to you. And then the people who have the most favorable view of America is America, followed by Brazil. So I like, I like the Brazilians. The French, that's cap. I mean, I like the French people, but I don't think the French like 
liked me as much as the Egyptians did. But if you're French, maybe I'm just being ignorant, which is could be happening. Italy likes us. Yeah, the rest makes sense. All right, this is China's disastrous passport. Uh, okay. So China claims a part that's claimed by India. They claim Taiwan. They don't claim Hong Kong. And then they claim some other, like, disputed territories from Vietnam, Brunei, Philippines, and Malaysia. Checks out. Gay rights around the world. I love how they break the U.S. up into states. The only reason I like this map, or the only reason I like that they kind of call this out, is because it shows that the U.S. has, like, so many different regions that are important to kind of, like, highlight how it's crazy to travel between each because of how massive it is. All right, so gay marriage is legal in Canada, parts of the U.S., it's good in Argentina. It's good in South Africa. Surprising to me. It's good in New Zealand. It's good in like a lot of, of Europe. Okay. Where is there the death penalty? All right. So the death penalty is given in a lot of the African countries. Looks like Sudan, uh, the Middle East, a large part, Iran. And then it looks pretty criminalized in Papua New Guinea. Uh, and then a lot of these other African countries and a lot of the Middle East, Pakistan, Afghanistan, etc. Okay, cool. Well, not cool. Some cool. Oh, whatever, I don't care. All right, where people smoke the most and least cigarettes per person. Okay, so the most per person is done in Russia. People are chimneys there. And then the least is actually India. So nobody smokes in India. That's kind of surprising. I, I thought that in a country like that, with that many people, there would at least be a good amount of people who consume. Maybe Modi, like, criminalized it? I don't know. I'm, I'm curious. Tell me why people in India don't smoke cigarettes. It's such news to me. Same with uh, Mexico. Huh. Very cool. All right, so this is North Korea's missile range. So let's see what they could do. Any damage. All right, so in development, let's just look at, like, the worst. So the worst is the Taipodong 2, which has a range of 6,700 kilometers. Which I guess Alaska, I mean, I like you guys, but like, you know, it's like, whatever. No, Alaska is beautiful. It is pretty upsetting to see that they can reach the United States. They could obviously reach like all of Asia, but that's why I think they're in bed with Russia and China right now because they want to make good good. Um, but yeah, I don't think they're necessarily able to reach um, very, very populous regions. So they're probably still in development. I also know that we have a lot of like interception systems in place. So if like a, a nuke or a missile was ever launched, I hope that there's at least like a 10%, 20% chance we could stop it. That's why diplomacy and politics and relationships is so important to avoid certain actors from, from launching missiles. Here's child poverty in the developed world. Um, child poverty is actually the highest in the United States. I wonder if that's because the poverty line is established higher in the United States versus other countries. So our poverty line, since we are a higher GDP output country, is probably something like $20,000, $32,000 even. It's somewhere between 20 and 30. And so a lot of households, of course, make less than that. So I guess that's the classification. But I don't think it means people are on the streets. I think it means that people are just making... Uh, below the median. I don't know what the exact, I don't know. I'm probably just like talking out of my butt right now. All right, so these are the world's 26 remaining monarchies. So if you live in a place that has a monarchy, then let me know. So we have Morocco, where the monarch is the head of state. And then we have a lot of the um, Middle Eastern countries, right? And then of course we have the UK. And we have the moniker as a figurehead in Norway and Sweden, also in Spain. That's cool. And then a UK Commonwealth figurehead. Wait, so there's a figurehead in Canada, Australia, and New Zealand? Who is that? Who, who is it for each of Does So does it matter? My question to you guys in specifically Canada, Australia, and New Zealand, do you care? Like the UK cares, right? Because like the queen's the queen. But in Canada, Australia, New Zealand, like, does it really matter? Or do you guys kind of like, oh, we could, like, whatever. Like, we don't respect them that much. I don't know. All right, so now we're getting into it. The most famous brand from each state in the U.S. Uh, Starbucks, Nike, Apple. Yeah, this all makes sense. I mean, it's just going to be, like, it's what you'd expect. Who's New Jersey's? I think it's Johnson & Johnson. I can't read what this says. 
Oh, it says Campbell's. That's definitely wrong. The most famous brand is Johnson & Johnson. They employ like half of New Jersey. So I don't think that's right. Verizon in New York, Hershey's in PA. Yeah, okay. Good data. All right, this is the red hair map of Europe. Let's take a look at this. Over 10% of people in Ireland and parts of the UK, this totally makes sense. They have red hair. That's actually quite high. Then you have people in Iceland, 5 to 9%. So where's so nobody has red hair in some of these southeastern European countries. So no Greek with red hair. If you have red hair and you're from this region, you're basically an anomaly. Like it wasn't supposed to happen or your parents probably mixed with somebody in North Europe. I think that would be the justification for it. And then it's interesting, like Russia, it's like nobody, but like, oh, this is one pocket of Russia. There's over 10% of people with red hair. So I don't know what's happening there, but something's happening. All right, now let's take a look at the most popular sports in the world. So football, which not to get confused with American football, dominates literally everywhere. And then China, we have table tennis. India, we have cricket. Australia, we have cricket as well. New Zealand is rugby. Okay. Canada is ice hockey. I mean, it's what you'd expect. I think interestingly in the US, it's American football everywhere, but baseball and basketball take, like I wouldn't think that basketball in California, you'd think with like, I guess there's like a lot of basketball teams. Yeah, you know, that's, that makes sense. Some of the interesting ones. So wrestling looks to be the biggest in Mongolia. And then we have archery, which is in pink. I don't even know where that is. One of these countries has archery. I think it's one of these Caribbean countries. It looks like a little bit lit up. And then I think one of the strangest ones is skiing is your most popular. And I can't tell. It might be Austria or Switzerland. It's too small. I'm squinting. But one of those guys. They're pretty cool. All right. So this is purely educational, but breast sizes relating to countries. So if we're looking at larger than D cup on average, then we have Russia kind of reigning supreme. Same with um, Norway, Sweden, and Finland. So shout out to you guys. And then the smallest on average are going to be found in Africa and all of Asia, pretty much. The United States is D. I know they break it down, like the difference between white Americans and black Americans. I remember did a video on this once. Black Americans have larger cup sizes on average than white Americans. So I don't know if they're compromising those two together. Nonetheless, it looks like the Nordic countries, Scandinavia reigns supreme in this regard, assuming bigger is better, which it's all equal. I think it's great either way. But yeah, the most used web browser world map. So Internet Explorer, which is no longer the case. This is 2012. If you're not on Google Chrome at this point, I don't know what to tell you. Maybe if you're on your phone, you use Safari. But if you're on the Internet, you should always be using Google Chrome. Not an ad, but Google just makes superior products for browsing. Especially now they're rolling out a lot of like private browsing features. So if you care about your data, actually, I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm sure these other browsers are like equally good. All right. So we just talked about cup size. Now we're going to look at member size. And in that regard, Colombia, Venezuela, Bolivia, Sudan, you guys are packing. Unfortunately, China, India, Thailand, a lot of Asia. You're still packing just in a different way. You're packing just like um, doesn't need express shipping. This isn't priority plus. You're just priority. Different, but fine. I mean, the United States not much better. I mean, the United States is kind of low comparatively. I wonder why that is. Europe's doing pretty good in general, especially in France and in some of these countries, Italy. So it is what it is. All right, this is a map of the most common surnames in Europe. So if you have any of these last names, let me know. I'm not going to go through all of them, but some of this makes sense. Smith. I think Smith is even the most in the United States as well. Rossi, Garcia, Nagy, Johansson, Hansen, all kind of the same. Lots of K's, lots of V's, a lot of the Baltic region going wild. So yeah, let me know if your name is uh, any of these guys. All right, here's a world map of national IQ scores. So the highest IQs, you know, tr like there comes a point where stereotypes are just so true that we might as well like adopt them. Like Asians are smart. They're smarter than everybody. It's just clear. Like, look, Asians are smart on average. They're just like, they're much smarter, especially Southeast Asia. Then you have the US, Europe, all pretty smart. A lot of this has to do because like IQ, the way it's calculated is based on like your access to education, your access to standardized testing. And so in a lot of the poorer countries, you're just not gonna have as many people who are focused necessarily on increasing their IQ. But I think like every single person, their uh, opportunity to score high if the playing ground was level, would all be the same. So 
Take it for what it is. All right, this is the most consumed alcoholic beverage by country. So we have beer kind of reigning supreme here and then some spirits, which I guess qualifies as vodka and that sort of stuff here. Uh, interestingly, you have wine, which is only big pretty much in Europe and then Argentina and Chile, which I guess is a function of like them having all of their grapes there. Uh, and then I don't know what less than 0.1 liters means. Less than 0.1 liters, what is that? Maybe that's like some hidden alcohol that I haven't like uncovered yet, but pretty interesting. Okay, so now we have worldwide driving orientation. So these are the countries that drive on the right versus the left. So interestingly, I think basically most British colonies for the most part drive still on the left side. So you have UK, Ireland, you have Cyprus, you have India, you have all of this like South African region, you have Australia, New Zealand, all these guys, Japan. Uh, there's few examples of countries that weren't British colonies that drive on the left, but for the most part, yeah. That's, uh, that's it. Here we have obesity, which, of course, it's going to stick out. A couple things that stick out. So Saudi Arabia, Egypt, like Libya, these countries are actually fatter than you think. Although when I was there, I didn't notice it. But everyone's like focused on the U.S. How do we focus on like Polynesia, Samoans? How about some of like the Pacific Islanders? They're, you can't see it. They, they hide well. I will give them that. They hide well. Whenever we talk about obesity, it's like, oh, Americans are fat. Like 40% of people are obese, which is fair. But like 50% are obese in the Pacific Islands. And we're just kind of like, oh, well, we can't see them. Oh, look at those little dots. Could be yellow. Could be gray. I don't know. No, they're red. They're beet red. If you're watching this and you're a Pacific Islander, you probably have a gut. And that's fine because having a gut if you're Samoan is cool. But if you have a gut and you're American, that's not cool. You know, there's no culture around being fat in the U.S. In Samoa, you're like a beast. You're like, like a mini rock, but... All right, map of the most attractive citizens in Europe. So the most attractive, it looks like people voted heavily for Sweden. And interestingly, some countries got very few votes, like Portuguese people. I don't know what's going on, but you got beat a lot by the people who are right next to you. So even though you guys like should, in theory, look somewhat similar, nobody's giving love to you. Nobody in Malta, nobody in Eastern and the Baltics is getting like any sort of love. I'm surprised Russians weren't higher... But yeah, the Swedens absolutely swept this. And then France, close close second, not really. Actually, not even close. Pretty good, though. All right, so here are the countries with McDonald's. So basically, I mean, McDonald's you can effectively find, like, anywhere. There's just McDonald's wherever you go. I, they're not in Africa yet. The moment McDonald's gets into Africa, it's over. So the McDonald's is the biggest fast food chain by locations. I think they're closer to 40,000. They just passed Subway. Um, and that's, I think they're in like 130 countries or something like that. But once they hit the African continent, it's over. I mean, they did hit it, but once they hit like the central African continent, then it's GG's. Interestingly, I don't know why Bolivia, they pulled out of Bolivia. That feels like a little something happened. Same with Iceland, like a former, what does that mean? They shut it down because nobody wanted it. Iran makes sense, right? Like geopolitical tension. You're just kind of like, uh, like not worth it. Let's pull out. But what's with the rest of this? This doesn't really make sense. Okay, surnames in the United States. So Smith is the most popular by far. Uh, there's some big like Johnsons, no pun intended. Obviously in SoCal, you got some of the more Hispanic names like Martinez and Hernandez, Anderson, pretty standard. All right, here's the most photographed places in the world. So it looks like Europe is like booming <laughs> with photography i think it's because europeans travel the most and so a lot of tourism is just coming in and out of the eu and a lot of this is concentrated i mean you'll see like the eiffel tower the Colosseum, a lot of like these countries i don't know why germany is like so heavily photographed uh, no idea uh but yeah maybe like Bradenburg gate and like the berlin wall area like in berlin like what's like the biggest tourist thing in germany but nonetheless Europeans lit up. I mean, a couple other interesting little light ups. So you see like New York City. So you're going to like Times Square, Empire State Building. Then you have like LA, people going to Rio, people going to uh, Indonesia here. Japan is very well toured, I suppose. People are taking pics in Tokyo. And yeah, that, it, that's, that's it. I mean, look at that. All right. And then we're going to end it with a pop culture map. This is the most listened to artist in every US state. So Daft Punk is like reigning supreme. Jay-Z. 
Why, why is Jay-Z so popular? You have Drake, who's reigning supreme in Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Louisiana, Macklemore, and Ryan Lewis in Hawaii and Montana. What's going on? Why is Daft Punk and Jay-Z so popular? Like, why are they the one too? Lord, in Col is she from Colorado? There's only five artists that like reign supreme here. I don't believe this. This cannot be true. Is this true? All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you want to see more content, make sure to click here or click here. Otherwise, subscribe on your way out, and I'll see you next time. Peace.